Hi, this is James Kateri, and today I'm going to talk about end-to-end -end learning for fair ranking systems. So this is a learning to rank paper. And in learning to rank, typically you're training a model to produce rankings of a list of items in order to optimize the relevance of the items to a given user's query towards the top of the ranked list. So you want most relevant items ranked towards the top and least relevant ranked towards the bottom. And the relevance of these items or results is typically measured by user click data. If an item is relevant, then it receives a lot of clicks from a user. So one type of issue that you can easily imagine that, uh, that can come up right away in learning to rank is that when you have high ranking search results, they receive more exposure. They're placed uh, towards the top of your web search results, for example. When they have more exp exposure, uh, then in the deployment of your ranking system, they're going to receive more, more clicks. Because of that, they're going to be ranked higher in uh, future queries and so on. So you have a sort of positive feedback, rich get richer type of dynamic. Now, on the other hand, sometimes it's desirable to have fairness of exposure in your ranking results across some predefined groups. So as a concrete example, I did a query on DuckDuckGo today, just CEO. And the images that it returned were, for the first page, all male CEOs for the top 20 or so results. Then I tried on Google and the same query, it gave me roughly half and half, male and female. CEOs. And so apparently Google is doing something along the lines of what we're trying to do here. But in any case, if a web search provider wishes for that sort of effect that they want to show, say, equal amounts of female CEOs um, with males, or more specifically, they want equal exposure between male and female search results then you have to introduce some kind of notion of constrained learning. So typically machine learning is unconstrained optimization like a regression, but if you have a requirement which needs to be satisfied by the result of that model, then you need to incorporate constraints somehow, and now you're doing constrained optimization. So in typical learning to rank, you have a, a model, call it M in this notation, parameterized by theta, the, the weights of your model. It acts on uh, item uh, feature embeddings. So every item that needs to be ranked has a feature embedding. And the supervision for the model is provided by user click data, usually in the form of binary vectors, indicating whether or not a particular user for a given query clicked on a result. And so the goal is just to maximize uh, empirically the utility of your highest ranked items, roughly speaking. So in fair learning to rank, you have the same empirical risk minimization, only now it's subject to some constraints. So if you call this V, uh, call it the violation of fairness in your ranking results coming from your model uh, for a given query. You may want the violation of fairness to be zero, which you could, might call perfect fairness, but you could also give it some slack and say, well, it just has to be less than delta, where delta is um, presumably small. This is the notion of fairness utility trade-off. So say a small uh, amount of slack in fairness can give you a big 
uh, boost in utility, then maybe uh, the person designing the system might find that an acceptable trade-off. And so we allow for that possibility as well. This is much harder than normal learning to rank because, again, you have constraints on the outputs of your model. And so typically that's not something that you're able to do in machine learning is to enforce requirements on the outputs along with maximizing the, the given loss function. In this case, the utility. The typical approach is to use penalty-based methods, which is to essentially maximize your utility as normally, and then have a second term which uh, minimize, aims to minimize the violation of fairness. So you'd have to form a linear combination of two objectives, and so you have a trade-off which is controlled by some coefficient, and there's several issues with that, one of which you don't know the value of the coefficient, um, which weights your fairness penalty in the loss function, which will actually give you the result you want. So if you do that, you have to resort to hyperparameter searches, which are very inefficient. It's not the only drawback, but it's a big one. So our approach is different. We find a way to embed a constrained optimization problem as part of the computation within the neural network. So as always, your learning to rank model is going to be learning to predict scores for every item that it considers. You have a list of items to be ranked. Your model is going to look at each item and give it a score. From there, ranking is easy. You just sort the items by their scores. So in our model, we assume that we are able to predict with some neural network uh, a list of item scores, which are the Y hats here in the, in the objective to this linear program. That's the predicted part. The rest of the, this optimization is um, static. It's constant for any given um, input. So the first constraint says that the solution to this problem uh, is going to be a matrix and that every row sums to one. The second constraint says every column sums to one. Also, every component of the solution needs to be between zero and one. So these constraints guarantee that the output of this optimization will be a doubly stochastic matrix. So this matrix is going to represent a distribution over rankings. So given a set of uh, item embeddings, you predict item scores, you solve this linear program to get a distribution over rankings, which can then be sampled for ranking results. Finally, though, we have one extra constraint, which is a fairness constraint. So typically, it's mathematically impossible to guarantee fairness of exposure in a single ranking because it's a discrete structure. But if you predict ranking policies, random policies, which are going to be sampled for rankings, then fairness of exposure can be guaranteed um, with a simple linear constraint, which we don't show in these slides uh, for time reasons, but you can check our paper to, to see sort of the, the pretty simple form of these fairness of exposure constraints that are used. So about the ranking distribution, that is what is ultimately output from our ranking model. It takes the form, like I said, of a doubly stochastic matrix. Any such matrix uh, can be decomposed into a convex combination of permutation matrices using the Birkhoff von Neumann decomposition, which is well known. So these convex coefficients, since they sum to one, they can be treated as a discrete probability distribution. If you just sample from that distribution, you can form a distribution over the associated permutation matrices. And then in practice, you can sample those, uh, those rankings to provide search results to users. 
which again, on average, will satisfy fairness of exposure within the tolerance that you specify in your model. Typically, when you're training to maximize utility of a random distribution, you have to be able to actually evaluate the expected utility, which requires sampling during training. So when you're sampling during training, you lose the end-to-end uh, -end connectedness of your calculation, which is important for differentiability so that you can train. Typically, in that case, you resort to something like policy gradient training, which is used in reinforcement learning, which has some issues in terms of efficiency, where the sort of elegance comes in in our design is that these doubly stochastic matrices that are produced, they can be analytically evaluated for their expected utility. Just by a simple calculation, you can show that um, if you evaluate utility as discounted cumulative gain, which is just a weighted combination of relevance uh, of items along with the value of their position in a ranking, it's a linear function on any permutation. And that linear function, if you distribute it over all your permutations, um, then you can just show that you have this relevance term and position bias term, uh, which are factored out of the convex combination representing your distribution. And the end result is just that you can evaluate the expected utility of a random ranking policy with this linear function. The significance of that is that you now have an end-to-end -end differentiable function which produces rankings. So it can be trained very efficiently and accurately compared to other methods. So the one thing we haven't described is the differentiation of this linear programming problem, which is the, the final calculation in our neural network. Of course, in order to train the network end to end, every operation has to be differentiable. The way this is done is with a convex surrogate loss function. It's described in the paper, uh, smart predict then optimize. It's only one way of finding approximate gradients to a linear programming problem as a function of its cost vector. But for us, the reason why we choose it is because it's very uh, efficient to evaluate. Compared to another option, for example, quadratic smoothing, another way you can make a linear programming problem smooth is by smoothing it with a quadratic term. That requires you to solve now a quadratic programming problem, which is much less efficient. So I have the uh, calculation for the loss in our model. It's called the regret. So the regret is just the utility of the optimal policy minus the utility of our predicted policy at any stage. Minimizing that is equivalent to maximizing the expected utility. The, what they call the SPO plus loss in this methodology is a convex surrogate loss function to the regret. And the property that we just want to make clear here is that its gradient can be calculated by two calls to a linear programming solver, one on a predicted uh, cost vector, the other one on your target cost vector, which again is your relevance label coming from click data. So in the forward pass of your network, you have one call to a linear programming solver. In the backward pass, you have two. And especially with hot start starting, which is well suited to this problem, these LP solvers can, uh, can be very efficient. So just one last overview of our model. You have um, the data set, input data consisting of feature embeddings for items. Those are fed to a, a small multi-layer perceptron, which for every item produces a relevance score. These relevance scores take the role of a linear objective in a linear programming problem. The optimal solution is a doubly stochastic matrix representing a distribution over rankings. You can evaluate the regret associated to that ranking distribution. And 
minimize it using the techniques we described, which again is equivalent to maximizing the expected utility, which is your goal in learning to rank. And finally, we have a quick comparison of two um, baseline methods, both of which are penalty based. One uses a policy gradient training. The other one uses a variant of the original um, list-wise learning to rank from Microsoft. And they're both outperformed in terms of fairness and utility measured by discounted cumulative gain, um, where each point, uh, well, each plot is associated to a different experiment. We have two data sets and two notions of uh, fairness. And each point corresponds to a different fairness parameter. In our case, it's the allowed fairness delta, which is directly controlled. In the other cases, it's the multiplier, which controls the trade-off between utility and fairness. And you can see um, clearly in each of these cases, they're outperformed in both metrics. So that's all the time I have, but I hope you'll read our paper and I look forward to taking questions. Thanks.